Aaron and Canterbury alum, Greg Coleman. Thank you very much. Very nice to be here. I'll go behind the podium in a second. So before I got up to speak, Tom gave me a gift. He said, Greg, this is a token of our appreciation. Um, so I'd like to start the auction right now, because I didn't want to die in about 20 years. Uh, but we'll do that later. But I, I will keep this, because there are there's an occasional funeral that I go to. And, uh, you guys will, you guys will find that out when you graduate, but I love looking at such well-dressed men and women in front of me, in my jeans. Um, so uh, one thought just came into my mind walking into this auditorium. So I started as a freshman in 1968, graduated in 72, and I remembered every Friday afternoon we had an assembly, and at the assembly people were picked on at like uh, without being informed to give an update on a sport or something that was going on. And my friend was called on, his name is John Hughes, he was called on to speak about JV football. And John got up and he was very nervous. And he stood up and he said, well, we lost a heartbreaker of a game to Trinity Pauling. Uh, we had the much, much, much better team. We were simply outcoached. <laughs> and his coach was sitting right up in the front, and it was like, oh wow, this I'll never forget this for my entire life. So I just wanted to share that with you. John is not on to be an ex-murderer. John, uh, John went to Georgetown with me and became a lawyer and very successful, but I uh, almost didn't overcome that. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you kind of an update um, on what I've been doing. So I've been at BuzzFeed now for the last nine months. This was part of the founding team and I worked at the Huffington Post where I was president um, five years ago. We sold the company to AOL, which worked out great. Then I went off to work for this company in France and then the founding team of Huffington Post also started BuzzFeed. So to be invited to come back to this kind of social media phenomenon was a real, uh, I felt honored, I felt privileged, I felt lucky, and something tells me that the grade point average of everybody here in this room would be up about another 10 points if BuzzFeed was not in existence. <laughs> you know, some of you may venture onto our site uh, from time to time. So I'm gonna give you um, and to do this in a half hour will be interesting. As Tom mentioned, I teach second year MBAs at New York University. And by the way, as I mentioned that, I also have to tell you that I was really, really on the edge when I was at Canterbury. And there's a famous letter that my father wrote to, um, to the headmaster that I was telling the story this morning that said, um, my son Gregory is promising to really work hard and we'll get him a tutor over the summer and he's going to apply himself and he will promise he'll study. Uh, P.S. enclosed as a check for the annual fund. <laughs> so this is how business was done there. Maybe it's done the same way right now, I'm not sure. Um, but to come from that and then all of a sudden having the chance to do some really fun things in this world, everybody's lights go on at different times my lights started to go on towards the end of my time here at Canterbury. So um, sometimes they go off, but mostly, uh, mostly on. So how many of you use BuzzFeed or read BuzzFeed? Okay, for the rest of you, get out of here right now <laughs> and uh, take some time. So, okay, here's my clicker. So to give you a sense, do I just hit the top one? The one to the right. The right one, yep. the one that says forward. Okay, so, um, today, for those of you that aren't aware, in this world of social media, I'm sure everybody is on Facebook and Twitter and Vine and Instagram and all those things, but the world is really changing, and today, content alone is not going to cut it in this world. We live in an intersection of content and technology, and I'm going to show you some statistics in a little while that will demonstrate how a brand that was really just started four and a half years ago has become a gigantic brand, not just in the United States, but around the world. 
And it has to do with two facts. It has to do with the fact that great content and great technology will allow the content to travel and allow the content to be shared. So for those of you that re read BuzzFeed, most of you are reading it via your social networks, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or somehow, 75% of all of our traffic comes not from people coming to our site, it comes from the stuff that's traveling. So to give you a sense, in terms of from January 2013, because of this intersection of tech and content, 2013, we have grown from 24 million unique visitors to 220 million unique visitors today. And it is the world, remember, I didn't start this company, so I can't brag on myself. I, I, as I told you, I feel really fortunate to be invited to come to take this company to the next level, but to see this kind of a growth is really unusual. So these are our monthly unique visitors. The app that we have, that many of you probably have on your smartphone, has also grown 10x since 2013. And then our videos have actually grown from 17 million, you, you don't see the numbers there, to in the month of March, so from 17 million views per month to now over 1.2 billion views. How many of you look at the BuzzFeed videos? From time to time, okay, great. So pretty cool, aren't they? And we have a four acre studio out in Los Angeles, out in Hollywood that produces, it's all of these videos that we make are made there. We're producing today between 60 and 70 short form videos per week. Um, so it's like a factory um, where we write, we produce, we act, we do all kinds of things. And we're now starting to morph into mid form content. And we're working with some really interesting people in Hollywood on longer form, on the development of TV shows, the development of movies, so stay tuned. No one at BuzzFeed ever imagined that the video business was going to grow this big, and there's a very good chance that sometime in the next three to five years, our video business will be larger than our website business. But again, behind this, it's not just great content, it's also the technology to allow us to share, and most of our views are split between YouTube and Facebook, and we have some affiliate partners as well. So in-house technology, um, for, for today I'm going to just give you a quick tour of this, but if you're an editor at BuzzFeed, not only do you have to be best of breed writer, thinker, you also have to be best of breed user of, of social technology, and if you're a great writer but you are bad at technology, you can't have a job there. The skill set today that's required. So for those of you that are going to be going into the media business, you are going to be required to have both brilliant ideas in terms of content, but you're also going to need to have brilliant ideas based on how technology can propel you further. And you're seeing it every single day here. So in terms of our in-house, every single writer has what we call access to our CMS, content management system, which is a bit of technology that's been developed for many years that allows an editor to seamlessly, as they're posting a story, they post the story, they're getting immediate feedback, they can morph the story, they can then push it out into social media, they can see where it's resonating, they can learn from the social ecosystem as to what's happening, picking up more information and adding it to the story all in real time. Now Tom mentioned prior to me going into the world of digital, I was working right down the street here in Pleasantville, New York at Reader's Digest, which was then a very fine company, but there we produced a monthly magazine, and that monthly magazine was prepared three months before, that's when the stories were finished, they were edited, then they were shipped to the printing plant in the middle of the country because it was easier to distribute the magazines. Um, and then the magazines were uh, sent out and they filled up the bathrooms every place in the United States. <laughs> People find their Reader's Digest. 
Um, but it's a far cry from what I just suggested today. That form of publishing was really interesting and important back then. But today, things are happening by the second. Getting feedback, but being able to do something about the feedback is what social media and technology is all about. So for those of you that are sharing something on BuzzFeed, whether it's a quiz or a fun story or uh, some of our investigative reporting, um, just know that by the time you read it an hour later or the next day, some things about it will have changed based on user feedback and based on the technology. So um, let's see, the editors think about, we always think about that. I'm just going to go fast. CMS allows the editors. Um, they can see how our posts are going to be looking before they share, before they go live. So we can actually see what the user experience will look like on Facebook, on Pinterest, on Twitter, before they go up. So we can make the changes because the user interface matters. We want people to engage. We want them to get involved in the story. So being, ha having a dashboard that will allow you to see what things look like is critical to what we do. So um, I'll just pass through this. So of the things that we're doing right now, we're finding that when we hit on a social phenomenon, we decide to do what we call a swarm. And I'm going to give you a couple of fun examples, but this is where we see something happening in the world that's really resonating, and we put all of our company muscle, editors, all of our technology people, all of our social marketing people behind an effort to create a supernova uh, bit of activity. And, and a couple of these are fun. So um, this is one where we actually got access to the White House, and we spent some time with President Obama, who showed us and shared with us the fact that his two daughters only get their news from BuzzFeed. And he said, I don't want that wildly quoted, but I'm telling you. Um, and what they're realizing is that, what he realized is that we have this gigantic population. So if we're reaching 220 million people, still most of those in the United States, and we hit mostly millennials, the 18 to 34s, it's a very powerful market for a politician or for a brand. So we had some fun with Obama, um, and we did this interview, it was translated, uh, we did a big header on the homepage, um, things everyone does but doesn't talk about, and I'm just trying to think where is the... Can you hit it again, the video will fly. This is too much. So 
So it gives you a sense that w with a brand being as big as we are, to get access to the White House, we fought with the people that protect his image, and he told them basically to go to hell, and he wanted to do this video. And while we can't share this with you, but the president's approval ratings as a result of this went up, and no one was surprised. He's been getting his butt kicked, as you know, by in, in, in the public world. Um, but to allow him to be himself for a moment opened up the door. But he was trying to get people to sign up for health care. That was the whole point behind it. We had some fun. And we had a lot of people. We had tens of thousands of people within 24 hours sign up for health care on healthcare.gov. So, when you're moving the envelope and you can get big within a particular demographic, you can get invited to the place in, to places like uh, the White House. We now have a seat in the press room. BuzzFeed has one of the very few coveted seats there. So when this happened, to make a swarm, we uploaded the video directly to Facebook's video player. So this only ran on Facebook. We made a deal with Facebook to supercharge it. We then. Um, also published it as a post. So we ran this on the site and it ran throughout social media. We sent it out as a newsletter. This is the swarm I'm talking about. Um, the social experiment, we responded in real time with all kinds of content and GIFs. Um, press around the interview was amazing. Um, so in terms of that, we had 50 million views in 24 hours. 50 million people saw what you saw within 24 hours because we swarmed around it. Um, the next one that I'll show you is, how many of you saw the dress? Okay. How many of you thought it was gold and white? Okay, you are all correct. No. I mean, so obviously there was the big debate, but let me tell you how this happened. Plus we didn't create it, a user posted this dress on BuzzFeed's Tumblr page. An editor spotted it and said, ah, this is kind of interesting, posted it on the main site, and boom, it, we all of a sudden found it going crazy. And all of a sudden, we decided to swarm it, and we did multiple posts around it. We um, translated it into international. It went viral everywhere in the world. The night that this ran, I was having dinner seated at a bar, um, and the people to the left of me and to the right of me were <coughs> arguing about the dress that my company posted that morning. And it happens in real time. But this does not happen without technology. And the point that I want to make to you today is that's really interesting what happened. If our editor doesn't find it, if we don't get behind it and pump it up with steroids in the world of social media and technology, it becomes interesting. It doesn't become a supernova. So then all of a sudden, it, we, people started to appear on television. Um, our leadership responded personally, so everybody was blogging about the dress. Um, and we had all kinds, Saturday Night Live on the bottom left, um, did a spoof on it that next weekend. So um, when you put your mind to it, so we had 56 million people see the dress in a 36 hour period. It just doesn't happen. So I'm gonna go through this quickly because I wanna show you another video, but we also do the same thing. So our revenue stream comes 100% from advertising. So to be able to do some of these things for brands is really important. So we try to do a Vulcan mind meld to understand what goes behind. We've done a lot of business with Walmart, 12 kids who deserve to get what they want uh, for the holidays. Um, we did a whole bunch, <coughs> My Black is Beautiful. We did a whole bunch of things on Barbie, A Million Views, Monopoly. Um, E nine. <laughs> 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 you do realize that Jacob hasn't been particularly nice to you in previous games. 
I think he built those hotels there for a reason, am I? To destroy you. That's 12 out of 13. the Harper. Oh my god, he's going for the Harper. Oh, the double whammy. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't know she was in surgery. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, time to... Let's put yellow. Julian, you got a spider on your back, dude. No, I got a... Oh, a Left foot yellow? Sweet. Thanks, please. Oh. Okay, we auction it. Yeah, but that's not good. It's a rule. What are you talking about? It's in the rules. Right here. If you land on a place and you don't want to buy it, the banker must auction it. Must auction it. And I'm the banker and I say we auction it. I'm going to start the bidding at 10 Monopoly dollars. 10 Monopoly dollars. Draw your hire. Draw your hire. Buy once. Twice. Sold. To me. It's finalized. Boom! Oh, I'm a freaking walking dictionary, folks. You have no chance. What does that even mean? Meets I won. Moochie! And a little over for you. So the, so the point of that is to say from an engagement standpoint, if you can be fun, if you can be relevant. And when we did the first series of videos for Monopoly, which is a game that's been around for a long time, it's a game I played since I was a kid. It's actually kind of a crazy game uh, when you think about it. There are a lot, lot more interesting games to play. But sales spiked around the world when these ads started to run. And then um, what I wanted to sh say, and, and I know I only have a couple more minutes, in the world of sharing, back when I was at the Huffington Post, the way you got more traffic to your site was through search. The light blue bar up on the top and people came to find articles by doing searches and through search engine optimization, they found their way to your site. Today the world is changing right now and most of the world and most of the content is traveling um, deeply through social sharing. You posting stuff to your um, favorite social media websites, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or so forth. So there's a sea change going on right there and you can take a look at the engagement for when we have more time. We're also looking at brand lift, what makes the brands more valuable. And then back on the video side, I mentioned before, we're growing so fast. Um, I don't think I want to show this one because we don't really have time. Oh, how do I go past go that? Go so I'm going to show you this. This, this video um, is, is a cat food ad. You're going to see a cat food ad which sounds, um, oh, I was going to make a terrible analogy, which I won't right now. But a cat food ad sounds very boring. But this is something that we did for Friskies. And think about engagement when you look at what you won't believe is an ad. Dear Kitten, since I have hissed at you the customary 437 times, it is now my duty as the head of the household to begrudgingly welcome you. Perhaps you are here to replace me, but I must do my duty and educate you on your new surroundings, as Maximilian once did for me. Rest in peace. Dear Kitten, this room here is basically a crapshoot. Either you get the betting of your life, and I'm in two hands, like you don't even know what's going on, or they just lie there and don't do anything. For hours, it's weird. Oh, and I should also point out, on special occasions, they will leave the underwear drawer open to signal their appreciation of me. Just to be clear, it's my spot. It's perfect in there. It's like sleeping surrounded by underwear. Well, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Dear kitten, I remember when I could fit in a shoe. There's nothing like it. 
being engulfed in 360 degrees of foot snail. Enjoy it while you can. Dear kitten, because you are so small, you cannot jump, which is sad, sad for you, but eventually you will, and you will find the places that I refer to as up. This will come in handy, especially around the human larva, which I know smells like milk, but can be a bit grabby. Dear kitten, you should be aware that there are two kinds of food. The first is sort of a dehydrated brown niblet. I think they gave us these because they're training us to be astronauts. Just a guess. The second kind is wet food. It is so special they keep it in little armored metal casings that no claw can penetrate. With no claws to speak of, the humans can somehow open them. It's like some dark magic. Dear kitten, I should warn you of the monster known as Vacuum. It can eat and yell at the same time. And I've seen it in everything. Seriously, like a paper clip and two cat toys. Didn't even flinch. To hide from Vacuum, you may use the curtains of invisibility. Oh yeah, you're good. Good hiding. Oh boy. Dear kid, one final note. Once in a while you might see a little red dot. I'm going to tell you this right now. It is real and it can be caught. I did it once. I held it for a full minute, but when I lifted my paws, it was gone. So, kitten, welcome to the household. You'll do just fine. To give you a sense, that uh, so-called ad um, was also a tremendous amount of press around it. So the client, the advertiser, paid for one million views. And it was shared to such a degree, and actually as of today, it's over 22 million views because people <laughs> liked it and they wanted their friends to see it, and they shared it. So from the standpoint of new wave, new age, a new wave of marketing, to be able to create something that is not a 30-second television spot, but something that is engaging and different and designed to share. So BuzzFeed has gotten to be as large as it has. I mentioned 100 times about the technology. But we design content that we really want people to share. So the thought process and the learning and the training for all of our editors, whether it's on the video side or if it's on the text-based side, around testing and learning and creating things that share. The very first video that we did for um, Friskies was OK, wasn't great. The third one we did was really good. And that was the last one. So we have two more in production right now. But the advertising world is scratching their head saying, I don't know how to do that. I know how to make 30 second polished ads where I have actors and we spend a million dollars on a shoot and we try to get it placed all on, on television that nobody watches anymore. Um, so what we're trying to do at our company is trying every single day to test and learn. I work for a media company, but I work in a lab. Every single day, we test and we learn and we test and we fail and we test and we win and no one cares about a belly flop. No one cares if you do something that doesn't turn out so well because there's learning behind that. So I go back to my traditional days where you got one shot. You produced a commercial based on the view of the director. And if it stunk, you couldn't change it. You just had to go with it. Same with the print ad, same with a story. So for those of you that have designs, maybe one day to go into the media world or any other kind of world, this world is changing. And the BuzzFeed that we're seeing today is going to be very different next year and very different two years from now. So to give you some stats on our company, today we have 950 employees. 
We're live in certainly the United States. We have seven markets outside of the United States that we're significant in, and we're adding six more this year. So the global nature, what we do and what interests you, interests people in Brazil. Last year, we had four editors in Brazil. That was the entire company, four. And those four editors could steal all the content they wanted from the United States. They had access to this content management system that I talked to you about. And in one year time, four people created the seventh largest publisher in the country of Brazil. Four people did that. And, th and what we have going for us in Brazil, you have youth, and it's a heavily social marketplace. So for the kinds of things we do, when BuzzFeed came on the scene, it exploded. And we're just going live in France, in Germany, We've been alive in the UK for a year. Um, Australia, Japan, where I was last week, um, Argentina, the Philippines, um, Taiwan. So we have to be careful. We only have so many resources. And our decisions are, wherever we publish a site for BuzzFeed, we want to completely own and operate it. We do not want to do a joint venture, a partnership um, with other companies. So I think for, um, you can see brand lift. So, I know, Tom, we have like, we have five minutes. So I, I just, I, I, I did it really rapid fire to try to um, entertain you a little bit, to try to get you to think about the fact that what you see and what delights you with our site isn't just people posting really cool stuff. So I would love it, I would love it if somebody could give me an update on how JV football um, went this year. No, I'd love it to see if we had uh, a couple of questions. And I'm just going to stand here. Oh, yeah, please. Hi, what's your name? Aaliyah. Aaliyah? Yeah. Hey, what year are you? Uh, freshman. Fresh? Third former. Third former? Yes. Yeah, I used to be one. <laughs> so, so bold for the third former. What's the question? Um, did you want to go into media with, like, when you were a candidate? Did you think you would get more It's a wonderful question. So I was not sure. Um, what I wanted to do, I was sure that I wanted to somehow graduate Canterbury. That was <laughs> mostly on my mind, truly. However, when I went to college, what changed me was that one of my professors was also the president of Newsweek magazine, which is now no longer in existence, to tell you how quickly things change. I took two of his classes, and it really changed my focus on where to go and how to start. But to, to further that, I had an interest in it, but then between my two years, when I went to business school, I went to NYU Business School, between my two years, uh, right after I graduated college, I went right into business school, which you really don't do today. You need to work for a couple of years. There was a, an article on the Wall Street Journal, which I was forced to subscribe to at business school, on how a magazine had done something different. So it was Woman's Day Magazine, decided to go away from a monthly format to publish 13 times a year, and I called the publisher up, and I told him, and it took me three times to get through, and I said I would work for him for nothing, and I was in his office the next day, and he gave me an internship, and he paid me, and I stayed there for nine years. <coughs> and I had no idea, it was just, if I didn't subscribe to the Wall Street Journal that day, if I didn't have a professor that turned me on to media, I don't know what I would be doing. I, I don't have a clue. So, I, you know, for those of you that think you know, I hope, I hope you don't know what you want to do. You're allowed to have inklings. You, you know, there are some people that if you want to be a lawyer, you probably should know it now, or a doctor. But outside of that, I, I think you got to keep your mind open and let let the let the wind come by and and see what kind of adventure comes comes past you. So, thank you. Do you want to get into this business? Uh, no. <laughs> Wow. You know, I was thinking about it, but now, no. That would have been, quite, that would have been a much, much better answer. How about another question? Yes, please. Do you have a plan to get I'm sorry, started? can I please have your oh, name? Sorry. There's a theme to the uh, idea. My name's Ted Chi. I'm 6 All oh, right. All right. <laughs> Do you have a plan to get to China? So China is difficult because of censorship issues, you know. So we are... Um, we're having some chats, but if we get into China, 
uh, you will probably most definitely need a partner to go into that market, and the most logical partner would be Alibaba. So we've had some discussions with them. But the hard news that we cover would probably not be the area of focus. China, the first thought would be, can we enter that market with video? That would be the first concept. So China, as you know, is a, it's a tremendous market, and we think there's going to be a lot of appetite for what we do. But you can fight City Hall, or you can go in and put your foot into the water. So probably in 2016, we'll, have, we'll start to have more serious conversations around China. But it's, it's great because lots of companies, including the giant Google, has real limitations of working in that market. How about one more, and then we'll, we'll wrap up? Just don't keep me hanging. I came all the way from New York for one more question. Yeah, please. I'm Bryce Joet. I'm from the Sixth Form. And uh, <laughs> if everything's changing so rapidly, how do you like stay ahead of the ball? Like, Where you should you go to college, Bryce? College, Hobart, and William Smith. Oh, wow. That's so. where my nephew, Park, went, who also went to Canada. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's in jail now. <laughs> so, Bryce, what's your question? Like, how do you stay ahead of the ball? How do you make sure that everything's like fresh and new? Because if everyone's coming up with new ideas, how do you make sure that your ideas are better than theirs? Yeah, so the only way to stay, to stay ahead is to test and learn. And those people that do not do that, that get set in the ways, are going to be unseated. My company that I was very proud of, Reader's Digest, has been in bankruptcy twice in the last five years. It's, it's a completely changed environment. And they had a chance in the mid-90s to jump into the digital world, as did all of the other publishers. The problem is you try to hold on to all of your analog dollars, and you put a little skunk's work scheme on where the puck is going, and it usually gets you in trouble. So for us, we are working all of the time on disrupting ourselves. We look at the competition. We do not thumb our noses at the competition. When I started working at the Huffington Post, people laughed at us back, this is back six years ago, because they called us a left-wing political blog, political rag, who would ever read that? And as we got bigger, the New York Times kept making fun of us and people that sold advertising for the New York Times would diss us regularly with advertisers until we became larger than the New York Times. And by the time we crossed their scale online, they never saw us coming. And they were like, wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Too bad. So in order to stay ahead, and it's, the, it's a really wonderful question, to sit on your laurels and clap. So I could show you this and clap and go back and not make any changes. We are pushing the envelope. And I'll say it for the 10th time, we're making mistakes every day. And when we make them, we really applaud because it's the only way for us to learn. Who saw Instagram coming? Who saw Snapchat coming? Where did that, where did that come from? Facebook, we tried to buy Facebook when I was at Yahoo. I was in the room where we offered Mark Zuckerberg one billion dollars. <laughs> and he said, holy crap, and came back the next day and asked for a billion two. And we were like, whoa, and we went away, talked to the board. And when we came back, Mark said, we're not for sale. And he chose wisely at that time, but our desire at Yahoo was to say, we know we're going to get old and dowdy soon. We need to do something different. Our big bet was betting on Alibaba, where we, we put a billion dollars in and bought 40% of the company and saved the company. Without investment, without that investment, Yahoo is in massive trouble right now. So it's, it's doing all of those things, is what I would say, with relish. So Tom, thank you. Great. Hi, I'm going to put it on for the car ride back to New York. <laughs> okay, great, thanks so much. Uh, amazing, amazing. So it says something about getting outside your comfort zone, right? Okay, six more.